This is the 22nd video in our series looking at how to complete a basic setup and configuration of a Synology Network Attached Storage Device, or as they're more commonly referred to, a NAS. In our previous video, we looked at how we used an alias to make the applications on our Synology NAS accessible from within a web browser window. In our example, we set an alias for FileStation. So in this video, we're going to take a more in-depth look at the features built into this application. As we mentioned in our previous video, FileStation is a file management tool written by Synology for the operating system of our NAS. A file manager is simply an application that will allow us to organize, list and locate files and folders stored on a computer system. So to give you a better understanding of what FileStation can do, let's use a standard user account and log into the web browser version of FileStation. When we log into FileStation, you can see that the application is divided into three basic areas. On the right side, we have the main panel that allows us to see the contents of a specific network share. To the left of the main panel, we have a sidebar that shows us the shared folders that this user can access on our NAS. As the manual's share on our NAS currently does not contain any files or folders, let's view the contents of the public share. At the top of the FileStation window, we have the name of the user currently logged into this instance of FileStation. We then have an option to log out of FileStation, along with an option that provides us with additional information about individual functions available in FileStation. Next, we have navigation buttons that allow us to move forward or backward through the file structures that we have been viewing. As we are viewing FileStation from within a web browser, it is possible that actions that we perform within FileStation might not be updated. So the refresh button is available to allow us to manually update the FileStation window. The address bar will show us the path that we've taken through the file structure for a specific network share. At the moment, we are looking at the top level of the public share. So if we select manuals from the sidebar, the address bar will change to manuals. As you watch the rest of this video, you should notice that when we open a subfolder within a share, the address bar will show not only the name of that share, but also the name of the subfolder. Search is fairly self-explanatory. If we need to find a file or folder that is stored on our NAS, by typing a word or phrase into the search field, our NAS will list any documents or folders that contain that keyword. If we need to highlight a group of objects within the main panel of FileStation, if we first highlight a file or folder, and then place our mouse pointer over the last object that we wish to group together, if we now hold down the Shift key on our keyboard, then press the mouse button, all objects between the first and last object will become highlighted. If we need to select multiple objects that have not been listed sequentially, if we hold down the command key on our keyboard, we can now use our mouse pointer to highlight specific objects. Within FileStation, we have a toolbar. The first button on the toolbar is called Upload. We can use the Upload button to transfer files to our NAS. When we select Upload, we are presented with two options. Upload Skip will allow us to upload a file from our computer to a network share on our NAS. However, if FileStation detects that a copy of the file we are uploading already exists in the location where we are uploading it to, the Upload Skip command will not upload the file. Upload Overwrite will do the opposite of Upload Skip. Upload Overwrite will simply save a file to a location on our NAS, ignoring any file which might already have the same file name. Let's try and upload a file using Upload Skip. We're first presented with a window which will allow us to browse the contents of the computer that we're working from. Let's highlight a file and select Choose. 
The file that we've selected from our computer has now been uploaded to the public share on our NAS. Create Folder allows us to create a folder into whichever network share has been highlighted in the sidebar. When we select Create Folder, we're first asked to give the folder a name before the folder is created. The Action command contains a list of the main commands that can be used within FileStation. As you can see here, because we have not yet highlighted a file or folder, the Action menu is greyed out. Let's highlight a file. Now when we select Action, our menu becomes active. As FileStation has determined that the file we've highlighted is a video file, the first option is Play. When we select Play, a new tab in our browser is opened, and the video file is downloaded. If we select the Play button, we can now watch the video from within our browser. The Play command will work with any files that are compatible with our Synology NAS, and will include video, audio and photo files. Any other files that FileStation cannot open from within the browser that file will be downloaded to the computer that you're working from. Let's highlight a document file and once again select Action. You can see that the menu options have slightly changed because we've highlighted a document. Within the menu, the first option will now allow us to send the highlighted file as an attachment to an email. However, this function is limited to only those that have set up mail server on their NAS. As we are using email accounts hosted by a third party, the command send as email attachments will not work. The next option is download, and as the name suggests, it will allow us to download a file to the computer that we're working on. If we select Open in New Window, the file that we have highlighted will open in a new browser window. However, if FileStation is unable to open the highlighted file, it will instead download the file to our computer. Add to Archive and Compress to will allow us to compress a file or folder into a zip file. These functions can be used to save storage space on our NAS or speed up the transfer of data. We'll be looking in more depth at Add to Archive and Compress 2 in future Quick Tip videos. The next few options should be familiar to anyone who has used a file manager. Copy 2 will allow us to copy the file that we have highlighted to another location on our NAS. Let's try and copy the README file from within public to our example subfolder. If we now check the example folder, you can see that a copy of the README file has been placed in this folder. The option move to is similar to the copy to command. However, rather than duplicate a file and then place it in a different location, move to will simply move a highlighted file to a different place on our network share. You can see that the README file no longer appears in the top tier of our public folder, but instead is now stored in New Folder. Let's highlight another file and demonstrate an alternative method for moving files within FileStation. If we once again select the Action menu, we also have the option Cut and Copy. As an example, let's select Copy. If we now open the example folder, we can display a quick menu by pressing the right button on our mouse. From within the quick menu, you can see that we have two paste options, paste overwrite and paste skip. Just like the options to upload files to our NAS, these two options allow us to choose how an object is pasted to a location. Let's choose paste overwrite.
If we once again highlight an object in File Station, the next option in the Action menu is Delete. While this command will remove a file or folder from our NAS, if we have enabled the Undelete feature, any files or folders that we have deleted can be recovered from the Recycle bin. The command Rename, as the title suggests, will allow us to rename a file or folder. The option Properties will provide us with additional information about any files that we have highlighted. When we select Properties from the Action menu, a Properties window will be displayed. First we have the title for the file or folder. Then we have the location where the file is stored on our NAS. Next we have the size of the file and the date that the file was last changed. The option called MD5 is the file's digital fingerprint, so we will be looking in more depth at this option in a future quick tip video. The final option is Owner, which will tell us who created this file or folder. The Permission tab allows us to see which of the other users of our NAS has access to this file and what type of access permissions they have. Let's select OK and return to File Station. The final option in the Action menu is Share. By using Shared Link, we are provided with a number of different ways that will allow us to share a link to the file that we currently have highlighted. If we review the link that has been created, we can see that the link is using the local IP address of our NAS. This means that currently our shared link will only work with another computer that is directly connected to our home network. However, when we make our NAS accessible via the internet, we will at that point be able to use shared links over the internet. The options within the Tools button will vary depending on the type of account you are logging into FileStation with. If you log into FileStation using an administrator's account, the Tools menu will allow you to mount network shares from other servers. However, if you have logged into FileStation with a standard user's account, you will only see the option Shared Link Manager. Shared Link Manager simply allows you to manage any shared links that you may have created to files or folders on your NAS. The final button in the menu bar is Settings, and once again will display different setting options depending on how you logged into FileStation. As we logged into FileStation with a standard user account, we are presented with two tabs, General and Security. Within the General tab, under FileStation, we have a number of options that will allow us to customise how FileStation works. These options are fairly self-explanatory and will allow us to better control the methods for moving files and folders within FileStation. The option Browse Files from Local Computer with FileStation, when we tried to enable, would not work on a stock install of Mac OS or Windows 10. We suspect that in order for this feature to work, we would need to first install something called Java Runtime Environment onto our computer. As we have no real desire to work within FileStation, rather than say Finder or File Explorer, and because the Java Runtime Environment can be a security risk if not regularly kept up to date, we will leave this option disabled. Code page is used for the download and compression of files, so again we will leave this option on its default, which in our example is English. Under the Security tab, we only have one option. Always open HTML files using plain text format. As we are using a web browser to log into FileStation, and FileStation has direct control and access over our NAS, it makes sense not to allow HTML files to load but instead show the contents of those HTML files. That way we can minimize the chance of malicious code running from within a HTML file. Just like any normal file manager, we can use FileStation to drag and drop files or folders into different network shares on our NAS. 
However, we can't drag and drop a file or folder from within File Station to, say, the desktop of our computer. Instead, in order to transfer a file or folder from File Station to the desktop of our computer, we will have to use the download command. Finally, on the right side of the toolbar, we have two icons. The first icon allows us to change how the files and folders are displayed within the main panel of File Station. The default view is List. However, we also have Tile View, Small Icon View, Medium Icon View, and Large Icon View. Let's revert to List View. The second icon allows us to sort files and folders within File Station. The default settings for sort are by name and in ascending order. Now that we have finished reviewing File Station, let's use the logout command to return to the login screen for File Station. As File Station replicates most of the functionality that can be found in either Finder or File Explorer, more than likely, at this stage in the setup of your NAS, you will find FileStation to be of very limited use. However, FileStation does come into its own when we configure our NAS to be accessible via the internet, as it can be very useful to be able to log into FileStation and then download or upload a report, spreadsheet or homework assignment to our NAS. So to recap, in this video, we simply reviewed some of the main features that can be found within File Station. For some of the features that we've skimmed over, we will be posting quick tip videos that will look at these features in a little bit more depth. In the next video in this series, we will start to look at installing some of the packages specifically written by Synology for our NAS.